You may be seated. Today, March 20th, 2021, is the day that Josiah Summers and Julie Behrens will be joined together in marriage. On this day, yes, two shall become one. Family and friends, welcome. Josiah and Julie are excited about this day, and they are grateful that you are all here. They thank you for being a part of their lives and their wedding day. God is here with us, and he will be witness to all that takes place this afternoon. Very soon, Josiah and Julie will be making a covenant based on vows made before our holy God who loves them unconditionally, as well as the love they have for each other and for him. May we be in awe of this union we call marriage because of our God who created it. On behalf of Josiah and Julie, again, welcome. They thank you for celebrating with them in this blessed and special event. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, very simply, we are glad to be in your presence this afternoon, celebrating something that you created and that you love. Two people coming together as husband and wife. God, we just pray that this day will honor Josiah and Julie and glorify you, and just not this day, but all the days ahead that they have together. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Josiah, today will you take Julie to be your wife? Yes. And Julie, today will you take Josiah to be your husband? Yes. Who gives their blessing for the marriage of Josiah and Julie? Julie. I will be reading from Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. It is truly an honor to be with you here today. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of officiating your wedding. We're going to have some fun this afternoon. And in the process, yeah, we'll probably get the two of you married too. Now, Josiah, I have known you all of your life. You've grown up here from that little guy who pulled the fire alarm here at Edinburgh Church. He did. To an energetic, enthusiastic, middle school kid. And then a high school student who was very active in the youth ministry. And now you stand here a groom. And Julie, obviously I haven't known you as long as I've known Josiah. But I think we can both agree that at times, Josiah can be a handful. But as I have gotten to know you, you have shown me that you have exactly what it will take to keep this young buck in line. Now, Josiah, take a long look at your bride, Julie. She is now your standard of beauty. No one else compares. Your eyes, your thoughts, your heart, your love all belong to Julie and to her alone. And Julie, take a long look at Josiah, your groom. He is handsome, or at least pretty good looking. And he is your man. Josiah is now the standard to which no one else will compare. All that you are and all that you have belong to him and him alone. Now, one of the things I asked each of you to do, and you did this separately, is to share with your family and friends who are here this afternoon what first attracted you to the other. And this is always interesting because you never know exactly what's going to come up, if they're going to be different or the same. But you guys did pretty good. So we'll start with Julie's, what first attracted me to Josiah? She wrote this. The question of what what first attracted me to, to Josiah is a different one for me to pinpoint an answer for. It was a lot of little things he cares about and wants to serve at church. He is easy to talk to, which is saying a lot coming from an introvert. He loves doing things outside no matter the weather, like hiking and camping. Those three things are the biggest things that drew me into wanting to talk more with him and are the things which brought us to where we are now. And Josiah wrote this, answering the question, what first attracted me to Julie? 
I would have to say there are two things that first stuck out to me. The first was the food she brought to share with the tech team a couple of Sunday mornings. What food did you bring that <laughs> captured this young man's heart? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you don't have to answer that now. We can do that at reception. The second was her love for nature and hiking, something that you guys obviously have in common. Now, your wedding passage is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. The book Ecclesiastes, written by Solomon, who it has been said is one of the wisest men to ever have lived, focuses on what it looks like to live life apart from God. In fact, throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon references living life apart from God to be like chasing the wind. Now imagine for a moment someone trying to chase and catch the wind. How silly that would look. I would ask that you keep this in mind as we roll through your wedding passage from the book of Ecclesiastes because I believe that attempting to do so, to do this thing we call marriage apart from the Lord is also like chasing the wind. Two are better than one. This picture of marriage is of two intertwined strands of rope, each with their own individuality and limitations. But they are better when joined and working together. If they pull in opposite directions, that would tend to become a problem. However, if they wrap themselves around each other, through their union, they form str something stronger than two individual strands. For they give strength to each other through their union. Husband and wife, Josiah and Julie. You are to wrap yourselves around each other emotionally and physically, giving love and support to one another. Genesis 2, chapter 2, verses 22 to 24 says this. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. The two are united into one. Two are better than one. Because within you exists a love for each other that comes from and has already been demonstrated to you by Jesus. This type of love is a key to a successful marriage. This is an unconditional love that you vow to give each other, making your marriage stronger than any other relationships you have. You're vowing today to lay your own lives down for the other, an absolute commitment to love the other person, independent of their performance unconditional love. You're committed to love the other no matter what happens. This love gives freely without strings attached, giving continually, not demanding anything in return. And our example of this kind of love, well, it shows up in Romans 8, 35 to 39, where we read this. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted, or hungry, or destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death? No. Despite all these things, over overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And please understand this, that Jesus loves you both, as he does all people, unconditionally. Any person who says yes to Jesus trusts in Jesus, allowing him to save them from an eternity separated from him and then chooses to live for him, will experience this type of love now and forever. Josiah and Julie, let this type of love reign in your lives and your marriage starting now and for all the days of your lives. Two are better off than one because they have a good return for their labor. Now, this is not speaking of you laboring or working to, to earn money, which obviously you're going to have to do. But instead, the work you put in your marriage relationship, yes, you must work at your marriage to keep harmony and peace, to not demand your way, but instead selflessly putting the other first. At times to speak less and listen better. Marriage is an investment, 
And with any investment, we want, we want to get a good return. Marriage is great. But please know that you get out of it what you put into it. So that it can be all that you hope it can be. And so the, that it can be all that God intends it to be. Now let's talk about what some of those investments may look like. First, from your passage, if either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. When things aren't going quite as you had planned or had hoped, when one of you falls, becomes discouraged, depressed, or stressed, makes a mistake that others see, says or does something you wish you could take back, but can't. You two need to be there for each other. You see, we live in a culture where it's very easy for someone to kick another person when they're down. And this can happen even from those who you wouldn't expect. When one falls, be there to pick them up. Love as it should be in marriage is accepting and forgiving. It, it knows that neither of you are perfect and that you will make mistakes. It accepts each other as you are. It is patient and kind, giving one another time to change when needed. Love does not keep a list of your faults and failures as others may do. God gave Joshua these words in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail nor abandon you. And God will not fail you or abandon you either. With his help, the two of you will not fail or abandon the other. Second, also your wedding passage says, If two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? In Minnesota, this makes more sense than other parts of the country during the winter. You see, we are to give warmth to each other, staying close and giving hugs physically and emotionally. The physical part we get. No, Josiah, when Julie has cold feet at night, let her put her feet against yours to warm them up. But I think this speaks of emotional support as well. Emotional support that you need to give to one another. Encourage, build up, strengthen, have faith in, trust in, laugh with each other, and maybe at times laugh at each other. You see, Josiah and Julie, if warmth is given when needed, physical and emotional, I believe that it will be given back by the other, and that will be a very good thing. And third, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. 1 Peter 5.8 5, says this, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Our great enemy, the father of lies, the manipulator, the tempter, deceiver, the devil, is going to attack your marriage. As two stand together under pressure and attack, they are much stronger. Stand firm against your enemy and be strong in your faith. Always be ready to fight for your marriage because there are going to be times where you are, you're going to have to do just that. And now, the greatest key to a successful marriage is in the final statement. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Two strands or two cords alone are limited and not stable because they can easily unravel under pressure. But the third strand or cord fixes the other two into place and adds strength to the first two. Three strands intertwined together are far stronger than any two could be on their own. The third strand is God. He is the one who always has been, is now, and forever will be. He is the one who spoke, and by his word, things appeared. He is the one who created marriage, and he is the one who picked Josiah and Julie to be married on this day. So Josiah, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Julie, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And together, both of you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, never forsaking that third strand. And in closing, Josiah and Julie, never forget the cross. Never forget how much Jesus loved you before you drew your first breath. Never forget how much Jesus loved you before you committed your first sin. You see, the cross is not simply something to be hung on the wall of a church or at our home. It is so much more than a pretty piece of jewelry to be hung around our necks. 
It is a symbol of death and sacrifice, of love and trust, so that anyone who believes and trusts in Jesus can receive forgiveness, can experience him now, every day, and then look forward to the best future that a person could hope for. Love God first and always. Remember who the enemy is. It's not each other. And never forget the cross. For without the Lord in your marriage, you both will simply be chasing the wind. We will now have the exchanging of the vows. Julie, we'll have you go first. Take you, Josiah, to be my wedded husband. From this day forward, together through the times we can go on hikes and the times when we cannot, both literally and metaphorically, I vow to love and to cherish you according to God's perfect will and to be together forever till death do us part. I, Josiah, take you, Julie, to be my wedded wife from this day forward. Together through the times when we can go on hikes and the times when we cannot, both literally and metaphorically, I vow to love and to cherish you according to God's perfect will to be together forever until death do us part. Josiah and Julie, do you have tokens for your love for one another that you will be exchanging today? The perfect circle of a ring symbolizes eternity. And our prayer is that your love for each other will be as eternal and everlasting as these rings. In the years to come, these rings should remind you of the overwhelming joy of this day when you two were united in marriage. Josiah, please take this ring, place it on Julie's finger, and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a lasting reminder of my vows. As a lasting reminder of my vows. And as a symbol of my love and commitment. And as a symbol of my love and commitment. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. That I adore being married to you. That I adore being married to you. Julie, please take this ring, place it on Josiah's finger, and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a lasting reminder of my vows. As a lasting reminder of my vows. And as a symbol of my love and commitment. And as a symbol of my love and commitment. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. That I adore being married to you. That I adore being married to you. Very good. Okay. You may be seated. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus.
the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing Let's pray. May the Lord bless you and protect you. 
May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his favor and give you his peace as you begin this new journey called marriage as husband and wife. Amen. Josiah Summers and Julie Behrens have now pledged their love for each other through the exchanging of vows and the exchanging of rings. And we, along with God, have been witness to these things taking place. What God has joined together, let no one ever separate. By the authority given to me by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the state of Minnesota, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And I'll get out of the way so wherever you can see, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> okay, are you done? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> All right, look at your friends and family. It is my distinct honor to introduce to you for the very first time Josiah and Julie Summers. <laughs> The bride and groom will be returning to dismiss you. If you would please remain seated until they do, that would be fantastic. And upon being dismissed, you are free to move toward, to the reception area in the gym. If you take a right as you leave the worship center and follow the hallway until you arrive. There you may greet each other and participate in a variety of games that will be available, as well as s'mores, hot chocolate, and cider. Thank you. <laughs> 